The next table is the course table, and it has an identity, a primary key, and a default value. So when I enter those in Management Studio, I can add identity. So the, the way we, this is our first time we've done identity, right? And the way you do it is you just put the column name, the data type, and then just put the keyword identity right there before not null. And then uh, the other ones were added the same. As far as the default value on the credits column, we put the data type, not null. We put that there's a default value and it's three. The constraint, primary key constraint we add and we execute it and it comes up and it works. So we copy and save it and copy it to our plain text file. Location is the next one. It also has an identity that's a primary key and a default value. So this looks very similar. So the location ID, small int, and identity and not null. And then room number, a default zero, and the primary key constraint. And we run that and it works. The section number has an identity, a primary key, three foreign keys, and two check constraints. <clears throat> so this table turned out to be pretty long when I was adding it all in. The identity was easy. And then semester was a constraint check where we just checked that semester was in the specified strings. Year was a little bit different. It's also a constraint check, but it was for a range. So we just checked that year was greater than 1900 and year was less than 2050. So that's how that kind of a constraint works. And then we had three table level constraints. The primary key is set to section number and there were four, three foreign key constraints. So we put all of that in and execute it. It runs, so we save it to our plain text file. Registration, registration is a small table, only has three columns, but it has lots of constraints. Primary key, two foreign keys, and a check. So there's the three columns, and put a constraint, a check constraint on that column to make sure the grades were all in where they needed to be, and primary key, and two foreign key constraints. And there's the registration table. The prerequisite has two columns, both of which are primary key and a foreign key. So both the columns are listed, and then the constraint for the primary key and the two foreign key constraints are added. And we execute that. And that's the end of all of our tables. Let's go over here and refresh and make sure they all show up. We go into databases. Find student U, go into tables. It's taking a minute, and there they all are. So there's all the tables, and you can look at each one individually to see what they look like. But we've added all of our tables successfully.